People, what is going on? It's been a minute since we've talked, but there was a few things I wanted to share with you all. So first, last year I produced a series for Drumio called DIY Drum Experiments. It's a six episode series, one on drum heads, which you're about to watch, one on cymbal stands, drumsticks, which you can see on Drumio's channel, hi-hat stands, miscellaneous gear, and then cymbals. So in each episode, we take a deep dive into some interesting things you can make with those items. For example, if you have an old tom arm, why not turn it into an X-hat stand? That's kind of the idea behind the series, just how to repurpose old things that you don't care about and turn them into something new. So if you're a member over on Drumio, you can go check that out. And then second, of course, while I was up there, we filmed a bunch of other stuff. Might sound cool. Don't break anything though. One of those things being a course on drum set maintenance. And it's actually free for everyone to view at the moment. You do not need to be a member. So there's a link down below. All you have to do is enter your email and the course will be sent straight to your inbox. So in the course, we talk about general maintenance you should do to your kit to keep it sounding good and of course looking good. But on top of that, also some common repairs to some problems you may encounter throughout your drumming career. So if you want to check that out, again, you do not need to be a member. It's free for everyone. Just follow the link down below. But on to the drum head hacks now. This was actually the first episode in the DIY drum experiment series and was also filmed before I redid everything in the studio. So it's kind of a blast from the past. So check it out and I hope you enjoy. Drumio, what is up guys? My name is David Rauf out of Richmond, Virginia. Some of you may know me as R David R on YouTube, and for those that aren't familiar with me or what I do, I like to modify my gear. So this all started back when I was 14 or 15 years old. I was in middle school and I decided I wanted to play drums because I like the physicalness of it, not only in playing, but just in the aspect of setting up the gear and having the drums at the right angle and the cymbals at the right height and everything looking good. And it's funny because my mom would joke around about how neat and tidy and perfect my drum set was while the rest of my bedroom was a complete disaster, which honestly is still the case today. Like most beginners, I had a super cheap and basic drum set. It was nothing fancy at all. And actually, uh, this is part of what's left of it. The other half is uh, hanging on my wall over there. But I took pride in that drum set and wanted to get the most mileage out of it that I could because who knew the next time I'll be able to afford a new drum set and I lusted over everything gear related. I wanted new drums, new cymbals, new heads, new snares, new pedals, new hardware, new this, new that. I wanted all this stuff, but as everyone knows, gear is super expensive, especially when you're first starting out. So I began to take the cheap junk that I had and turn it into something new. The snare, it used to be a tom. Oh, and by the way, this is my workshop. So completely unrelated to drums, I've always enjoyed the process of creating things with my hands, whether it was gluing popsicle sticks together in kindergarten, playing with Legos, or just hammering two boards together because it sounded fun. I've always enjoyed the process of creating with my hands, which is partially the reason why I picked up an instrument but when I took drums more seriously, it was all I wanted to do. It was all I thought about, you know, if I wasn't playing drums, I was talking about drums. And if no one wanted to talk to me about drums, I was thinking about drums. So drums completely consumed my life. But after a few years of really focusing on drums and my playing, I noticed a void in my life, which was just building something. And at the same time, YouTube was slowly becoming what it is today. And I found a whole bunch of woodworking channels and I started to build a, a workshop in my mom's garage and acquire all these tools. And I remember I was standing there one day and I had an epiphany. I have all these woodworking tools. Drums are made out of wood. 
I should cut my drums in half. And from that day, I started to share my ideas and creations online just to show that sometimes you don't get to go out and buy a new piece of gear and to, to use that piece of hardware that you threw in your closet or to finally do something with that crack symbol that you're scared to get rid of. And at first, I was scared to modify my gear because people hold gear to such high standards and I thought people would hate me for cutting up drums and modifying this gear. But this past year, I was awarded Best Online Drum Personality by Rhythm Magazine and all I did was drill holes in drums and cymbals, so I guess I'm doing something right. Jared only got fourth. So in this series, we'll take a look into the world of modifying gear. So we'll start simple and see what we can do with some old drum heads. This is a set of dividers. They're similar to a compass, but this is the tool we'll use to cut the heads. So first, we'll take the dividers and set them to the radius of the size you want to make. So I'm starting with a 12 inch ring, so I'll set them to 6 inches. And then I'll take an old drum head one size up. Since I'm making a 12 inch ring, I'm using a 13 inch head, and I'll run the divider around the head, and since the tip of the divider is pointed, it'll cut through the head and leave you with a clean and crisp edge. We can get rid of the rim and we're left with this round sheet. Now we can set the dividers to an inch less than the radius, so 5 inches in this case, and repeat. And once we cut through, we got an O-ring. Now just repeat the process with all the other sizes that you need. For this one, we can use up some scraps. This piece is the center cutout for making the O-rings. First, we'll make a cut anywhere on the head and we'll use our straight edge as a guide for our razor blade. Then measure over 3 quarters of an inch from the mark we just made and mark both sides of the head. Line up the straight edge with those marks and make another cut, and there you go, we just made some snare straps. This one's real simple. Take a drum head the same size as your snare, so in my case 14 inches, and cut right where the head meets the rim with a razor blade. Ditch the rim and throw the head on your snare for that ultra low 70s snare sound. And since we left the lip around the head, it's easy to take on and off. This one's a two for one deal. Next time you get a new Rezo bass drum head, use the dividers to cut a new porthole for your mic. And with the leftover disc, you can gaff tape it to the batter side head and make sure you leave it pretty loose.
but what this little patch does is it slaps against the head and creates more attack for your kick drum, and of course using a hard beater helps too. I like to call this one the jingle ring. We'll start by using the same process to make an O-ring, but we're gonna make it really small. Six inches will do the trick. Once the ring is cut, we need to lay out a five hole pattern. I drew this up myself, but we have provided a PDF template for you to print out. Now we take a hole punch and punch through the marks, making sure that the holes are slightly larger than the rivets. To install the jingles, we take a rivet, two jingles, the ring, and then last, a washer. This is a center punch, and it's the ideal tool to peen over the rivets. And there you have it, a cool way to add some effects to your cymbals. If we repeat the same steps as before, we can make an O-jing, an O-ring combined with a jingle ring. Talk about a bass drum porthole. The only difference for this one is the jingles need to fit on the ring, so I'm making sure there's about a 3 16 inch gap on each side of the jingle. And to lay out the whole pattern, I'll place it on my snare and use the tension rods as my reference. And then from here on out, it's the same process as the jingle ring. It's honestly that easy. With a few old drum heads, some simple tools and materials, we were able to take something that was essentially useless and make some cool items for your drum set. So next time you switch out your drum heads, I want to challenge you to think creatively and see what kind of uses you can come up with for old drum heads. And also don't be scared to think outside of the drum set. I've used coated heads as light diffusers. You can cut them up and make stencils. Everybody loves a good game of frisbee. I showed my clock earlier so you can easily make a clock with just a drum head and really the possibilities are endless so be sure to share your discoveries with us. So until next time, I am David Rauf signing out.